Hey friends, Steve at Tronix Fix sent me another project. And as you can see from the thumbnail and from this right here, it's bad. What happened? I'm assuming this is from a dog. Maybe a really aggressive baby that was teething. I have no idea what this is gonna be like on the inside, but we've got to find out if there is anything salvageable about this. So let's get it taken apart. This is obviously in really bad shape. So we are going to get to work. First, let's test it out. Wow, I'm honestly surprised I'm even getting this amount of response. Clearly the screen is toast. I unfortunately don't have any sound. I expected that. I am getting some button response here as well as from the d-pad it's hard at this place for me to tell if anything else is working so let's just power it down get it taken apart and find out if anything in here is salvageable this may end up being the switch light of theseus here by the time we're done but i'm hoping that there's at least something inside of here that we can use just pry this back case off and we get our first look. This right speaker is trash for sure. Just looking at that. Same on the left side here. We do have a good dent bite mark in the metal plate there that's over the battery. Let's just get all of these pieces taken apart here and kind of determine what if any of these parts we can use again. Basically, I'm gonna rule out anything that has a tooth mark in it or is broken in any way. But a few of these things, I think we can keep. We're definitely done with the shell. Let's get this plate taken off here and see what we are looking at. So internally, I'm actually kind of hopeful. There is a little bit of a dent in the bottom of the battery here, but that's actually not where the battery itself is. It's part of the kind of board for the battery and the battery was working. Just going to put some isopropyl alcohol in here to start loosening up the adhesive. These batteries have a ridiculously kind of heavy sticky pad on the bottom of them that keeps them connected. That requires quite a bit of loosening before we're gonna be able to budget and get out of the way. Let's go ahead and unplug this battery. Now, Steve gave me this little bottle with a syringe on it. This is still just isopropyl alcohol, but it will help me actually get that down underneath and start loosening that adhesive pad as we slowly work at it. This is only gonna be about a minute of footage here once I edit it down, but actually working on this is about a 10 to 15 minute process. We just keep loosening it, prying it, holding it, I do want to be kind of careful because the plastic housing around this battery can break if I put a lot of pressure against it also, so I don't want that to happen. And we are about to get it finally. There we go. And the battery is loose. Let's just sop up a little bit of that IPA and we can continue disassembling this. The ribbon cable sets inside of this little plastic slot and that was kind of crunched together by the bite. So we're going to loosen that up so we hopefully don't tear this cable. And the cable actually looks good. I'm taking the cover off of this speaker system because I want to see inside of here. When I tested the system, the sound was not working. So. Yep. We'll just put that aside and have to replace it. This little bit of housing was chewed up a little bit. There are also bite marks on our L button here. Oh, 
Now let's get this board out of the way here and see what we're looking at. See, the board actually looks good, even though, as you can see, the silicone pad that the D-pad is underneath had so much pressure put on it that it cut the edges of it. These buttons all have tooth marks in them, so we're going to get them out of the way. Obviously, we're not going to be able to use this joystick, so pull it out of the way as well. We didn't even have the ZL button, but we will get this ZR button out of the way. Take all this stuff apart, just like we did the other side. I want to look inside of this speaker casing as well. Yep, we're looking at some of the similar damage there. We actually can't remove that speaker yet, so let's get the heat sink lifted out of here. I'm trying not to tear this foam here, but I felt bad about it happening. And then Steve told me that every time he does these, it tears also, so I don't feel as bad anymore. Let's get this game cartridge reader and headphone jack out of the way. These two pieces are separatable once you have them taken off here. I could remove that, but I'm just gonna keep it together. This all looks good to me. I'm gonna try to use it. Let's set that aside. I wanna get this ribbon cable out of the way. There is a little bite mark here, but it doesn't seem to be hurting the cable. I'm gonna to try to keep using it. Now we just have a lot of little cables to disconnect and get out of the way so that we can remove this motherboard. Slide it out from underneath the speaker housing here. And let's take a look. Honestly, I'm quite hopeful and very surprised. As bad as the outside of this console was, I was expecting some physical damage at least on the motherboard, but it doesn't look like there is. Again, all of these buttons have tooth marks on them. Another joystick to get out of the way. Let's take a look at our fan here. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. At least not physically, visibly. Let's get this antenna. That looks good. I might try to use that. Same with this one. Okay, now we can get this housing off of here and we'll be able to access the screen. There we go. You can see a little bit of my isopropyl alcohol got to here from the generous amount I was using to loosen the battery. That may look good, but I did turn this on and it does not work. So we are going to Remove this, even though I'm not gonna keep any of this stuff. I just wanna do it because of the satisfaction of peeling this off of here. If I wanted to keep it, I would use a heat gun or a hair dryer or something and take it off quite a bit more carefully than that. But I'm not gonna be keeping any of this stuff. And we have this thing pretty well disassembled now. And I have an idea, at least, of what I'm going to be able to keep. So let's take a look at everything here. I organized everything on my table here based upon what I think I can use and what I know that I'm not gonna be able to use. So everything on the right here, the right of that kind of gap, are the pieces that I'm gonna try to use. And then everything over here on the left, I don't think is salvageable. So I'm gonna go looking through all of the switch light parts that we have here around the shop because of different videos that Steve at Tronix Fix has done with switch lights and try to piece together enough stuff to be able to put ours back together. So I deliberated over this for a long time, but I have come to the conclusion that I wanna try using two different shells. 
a gray top and a clear back. And then I'm just going to use different pieces all the way around here to finish the job. Let's switch over to the blue mat because this gray will look a lot better than against another gray mat. I'm going to really try to clean the inside of this screen, get any dust, any smudge, any fingerprints, everything off of here. I'm using a wet wipe followed by a dry wipe. And hey, Robert from the future, going to make a little note for you that this did not work super well. I still got some streaks on the inside of this that required me to completely take it apart again when I was done. So just a note to you, be careful when cleaning the inside of here because it'll require a complete disassembly if you don't get it right. There is a little screen protector on here, but they don't really give you a nice place to grab it and remove it. So I kind of had to work at the corner there and it made a little bit of debris, but we'll carefully wipe that off. There we go. Let's just make sure to get any loose dust gone from here. And then we will put this together. This isn't actually stuck on the back of this housing, so I'm going to kind of carefully be setting this down in here together. Even though I suppose I could just put the screen on there and then put the housing on after that. Alright, let's get this beautiful thing put back together. Just a little bit of cleaning that I noticed here. This is a pretty untypical video for me in that I don't really have cleaning to do. We ordered a couple of Hal Effect joysticks to use here that are supposed to get rid of the drift problem that can happen with the Nintendo Switch joysticks. Let's get our old thermo paste removed here. We're gonna slide this right under that speaker housing. And then we need to make sure to get all of our cables out from underneath the board before we screw it down. We have our wire cables over here for the antennas. Don't forget that cable for the fan. And I think we have them all. We'll get all of these cables reconnected. I am using metal tweezers here, but I'm being very careful. And it's what I'm choosing to do, not necessarily recommending it. As I'm putting this back together, I am wondering how much of this is going to work. I did test this system before taking it apart. It would turn on. I could get some responsiveness from the buttons. Half of the screen was broken, it would not display anything. There was no sound. So I know some things are working, but I don't know about some of the other parts. Here is where I should insert my thermal paste joke.
these are a little bit tricky to set in here with that spring in the right spot but eventually we got it just line the spring up and it works I'm gonna move this cable out of the way so that we can set our right joystick in there. Make sure not to bury that cable. That'll lock all of our gates back. And hey, I must have learned from the last one, because that was a lot easier to set that. Nice. Just clip those down on there. I want to make sure to fish this cable through that slot. Ready to set our battery back in. Make sure we connect it before attaching the ribbon cable over top of that connector. I'm going to put a little bit of thermal paste up here as well, just on top of the heat sink where there was a different color of paste there, but this thermal paste should work just fine. Set the plate carefully right on top of that paste and we can secure it down. Here is the translucent back shell that I want to use. This little silicone thing is a little tricky to get set on those buttons that hold it down, but we got it. These black doors here came with this back shell. Let's just make sure everything is cleaned out really nice, no dust, before we connect this together. In order to get this to set, we just kind of keep working it around the edges and eventually it should kind of latch itself cleanly into place. There we go, bit by bit. And there we go. It's set together. We can put our screws back on this case. Switch back to our Y bit to finish. Let's test it out. And we're getting power. We have sound. That is really good. The joysticks seem to be working as well as the D-pad. Let's test a game. And it's loading up the game, it's playing. This is awesome. I love the way this thing looks. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out whatever Restorish video YouTube recommends for you next here on the screen. Thanks for hanging out with me. We'll see you next time.